Okay, I want us to start with a word of prayer and uh, we will glorify the Lord. Let us pray. Mighty Father, our God and our Savior Jesus, we come before you. We thank you so much and we magnify your holy name because there is none like you in heaven and earth. Thank you for this day that you have given us, Lord, that we may know the secrets of your kingdom in Jesus' name. These are your people that are watching, O oh God. These are your people that are listening, O oh God. I surrender them unto you, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, O oh my Father and my God, the God of Israel, the God of David, God of, of, of the gospel, the God who created the gospel, you who, sp you who sent us, Lord, I pray that you may speak to us and you may bless us through your word in Jesus' name. Jehovah God, we surrender to you that we may learn from you. Lord, open our understanding, open our ears, open our mind in Jesus' name. And let your precious, powerful spirit take control. In Jesus' name, we do pray and believe. Amen, amen, amen. May the Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Where? I want to speak about uh, being the title is the Godly family. Godly family. I want to speak about marriage and about the Godly family or a Godly marriage. Uh, because right now there is an ongoing battle that is ongoing right now. The battle that is, 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 is intense, it is the battle between families. The devil is fighting against families in this end time. He's against the children, he's against the married, he's against the wives, he's against husbands. The devil is fighting against a godly family. He wants to make sure that he has eliminated and destroyed a family. Why is the devil targeting the family, targeting the marriage? Because when the devil touches the family, he touches the children. Do you understand? That if he manages and destroys the family, he will destroy the life of those children. You find that those children that are uh, that, 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 that goes astray, they do go they go astray because of the family. One time their marriage was broken, maybe some they were they were desperate. Maybe some they were they, they, it was broken or they were they were they were brought up by one by one uh, one parent. You find that there are challenges. There are challenges. So the life of that child, if she or he do not restore to Jesus Christ, they 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 mess their life. They become that they have racked something. So the devil is fighting against a family in this hour. Because he know that in the family, that's where the, 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 the godly people will come from. That's where the people of God will come from. You see? Because it is only in the, in the family of the godly people where we can have uh, the children of the kingdom of God. So, the enemy is against the family. For he knows that when he fights against the family, he will fight against the future of generation that is to come. We hear God saying, I am God, I am, I am the Lord God of Abraham, Jacob, and David. And he reminds the children that, that go, go back to the way of your father. Your way of your father Abraham. That go back and see the covenant that, that Abraham, that David, that Joseph, uh, Jacob, they made with God. So you find that, that the, 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 the Christianity that we have, all the godliness that we have, it comes from our forefathers. It comes from, for, from the godly family of Jacob Abraham. That's where we have come from, that lineage of the godly family, of the godly people that were there. That's where we came from. So you see that if the family will be destroyed, if the family will be destroyed by the devil, that means there would be a descendant, a holy descendant, that will be serving God in the days to come. That's why the enemy is against family, to destroy the family, so that it may destroy the future of the children to come. Because it is in the family where, where those children who have something, they are brought up. It is in that family where those children 
who are of the kingdom of God, they are brought up there. It was in the family of Mary and, and Joseph where Jesus Christ was brought up. It was in that family of godly parent that there, 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 there came a savior. There came prophets and apostles. So it was in the beginning of a godly family. Also, that's why the enemy is fighting the godly family. So that he may fight against the prophets of the days to come, the, the apostles of the days to come, uh, the, the holy people, the holy children, and the, 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 the armies of God of the days to come. That's why the enemy is fighting against the families. For he, he, he knows that if he can manage to fight against the family, he break the family, he break that marriage. Therefore, he can win uh, the life of those children or it cannot be enough for one parent to raise the children. There will be something that will be lacking. You see? Let us read in the book of, in the, in the book of Genesis chapter 2. The book of Genesis chapter 2 and we are speaking about the godly family. Yes, how to raise this godly family and its purpose. We can see back from Genesis 2, 20. Genesis 2, 20. Uh, there is something that God is saying about the family. And if we understand this, we will have a gravity and a reason to pray for the family and to stand for godly family. We are reading Genesis 2, 20. My, my Bible is saying this. Uh-huh. Genesis 20, 20 to 23. The Bible is saying, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep. 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept and he took one of his lips and crossed up the flesh instead thereof. Look at that. 22 say, And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto a man. You see? And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called a woman, because she was taken out of a man. Look at that. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh, and they, were bo uh, they shall be one flesh. Look at that. That the Bible says, And the rib which the Lord God had taken from a man, made, he made a woman and brought her unto, uh, unto, uh, unto, unto the man. And Adam said, when he saw that, uh, that, uh, uh, that woman, she, he said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh and shall be called woman because she was taken out of a man. We see from this word that the marriage came from God. The godly marriage came from God. It is God who made woman out of a man. That means that a woman is made out of a man. Not a man out of a woman, but a woman is made out of a woman, uh, 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 out of a man. Uh, 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 Eve was made out of Adam. And that's where he say, she, he shall be called the flesh of my flesh, the bone of my bones. Because she belonged to Abra, she belonged to Adam. That's a godly family. That in a godly family, it is started by God. It is God who start a godly family. And he started this family for his own glory. That God gave uh, Adam the woman who was Eve. That she should be her, uh, his partner. She should be his, uh, his manager. He should be his helper. You see? He should be, she should be his helper. And we can see that from there, Adam had peace. Adam settled. There was something that was lacking from Adam. The Bible says that God looked and he saw that there is nothing that is meet for Adam. Nothing that is compatible for him. When he looked animal, they are two by two. And they are enjoying themselves. But for Adam, he was... He was still not satisfied, although he had everything, but he was not satisfied because there was something that was lacking in Adam, that is a wife. And God saw it is well for God to give him Eve. And Adam 
The Bible say, and, the, and she was taken out of a man. And for that cause, she was called woman. That means that a godly family is started by God. That let God be in that center. But the devil brings destruction. The devil brings divorce. He says that therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and they shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one fresh. And the Bible says that what God have united, let no man put asunder. That is a word that the devil hates so much. He hates to see a godly family. He hates to see a man that loves his wife. He hates to see a woman that loves a, a, a husband. The devil hates to see a family that is in united. That a family that is uh, uh, that there is in love. A family that is godly. That's why he is bringing adultery, fornication, uh, uh, immorality, breakup, and divorce. He is all bringing those things to defile the marriage. That's, that's why the Bible says that God will not allow fornication, will not allow adultery. For he says in the book of Mark 10, 11, that whoever, whoever divorces his wife, yes, whoever divorces his wife, then he go and marry, and whoever marries a divorcee wife, therefore he commit adultery. So the devil knows that word. That's why today there is marriage and divorce. There is after marriage, there is divorce. Then they go, they remarry again and again. And they are still in the church. Those things they are doing, they are still in the church. And that's how the devil is defying this godly family. That's how he is managing to destroy the family of God by bringing defilement, defilement in adultery, defilement in fornication. The devil is a fool of lie. He wants to, des to destroy the family of godly people. We need to be wise here. For God is saying that what therefore God has joined, let no, no man put asunder. So he said that what God have put together. Let no man put asunder. But the devil is against it. He is coming to destroy the family, to put asunder the godly people. That is the tactics of the enemy. But he, he is overcome in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us also read, <clears throat> let us also read here, in this book of Genesis uh, chapter uh, Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2, uh, verses 23. It says, And Adam said, This is now born of my, my bone, and the flesh of my flesh shall be called woman, because she was taken out of a man. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus Christ. That she shall, be, she shall be called woman, for she was taken out of a man. That is a demonstration to tell us that a woman is meant for a man. That a man cannot survive without a woman. Right? The way we cannot survive without God. That a poor man need a woman. And the devil know that when he destroy the marriage, when he destroy the marriage, when he brings confusion, he know that the man will not be full. <laughs> the man will not be full. There is something that will be lacking in the man. And that is where... Now there is the secret, the, the secret that he is coming to destroy the family so that people will not be perfect. That if you are a man, you will not be perfect. If you are a woman, you, you will not be perfect. You see? That's why we should, we, we should always uh, 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 pres preserve this marriage. Preserve your marriage. Because when you preserve that marriage, uh, there will be power. There will be power. There will be power that comes from Almighty God to protect your family and to fight for that family. The mission of the devil is to ruin the marriage so that he may destroy the future of the children that are coming. So, 
we can see raising a godly family is that we must put God in the center. For it is God who was in the beginning. He is the one who brought you together. So you should guide and preserve and protect that thing that you received from God. Praise Jesus Christ. The thing that you received from God, that marriage comes from God. You should fight for it. And you should know that we are supposed to put it at the center. We are supposed to put it at the center. In the center of the word of God. That in everything, let us put God first. Let us put God first. Because God is the one who started it. Like we see in this book, that is the one who started Adam and Eve. So God is the one who started the marriage institution. And what is started by God can only be finished by God. But the devil tries to bring disagreement, he tries to bring confusion to distract and to destroy the future of that godly family. We can see in the Bible, the word of God, that all those children or all those men and women who are used mightily by God, they, were, they came from a godly family. They came from a godly family. That's why we are speaking about the godly family. Because in the godly family, that's where there comes uh, prophets, there come uh, ministers, there come godly women and godly men. There comes great people who will be used in the kingdom of God. So when we preserve the godly marriage or godly family, we preserve the generation, we preserve the anointing. It is the anointing of God in our children, anointing of God we are preserving. For in the family, that's where we see there comes people like Elijah, people, those strong people, uh, like John the Baptist and all others. You see, even Samson, they came from a godly family and God told their, fam uh, their father and mother that they should preserve those children. They should not uh, let those children be like others. So they preserved them. So when we preserve uh, our marriage, like a godly marriage, that we will be preserving the generation of the mighty men and women who will be used so mightily in this generation and the generation to come. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus Christ. Mm. So let us put God in the center. Let us put God in the center. Because today many marriages or many families, they have been destroyed because God is not in the center. Uh, people are leading themselves. People, instead of being led by God, the family of today, they are being led by Hollywood. They are being led and, and being ruled, being shown the way by the movie, by the TV. The TV has become uh, the, the, the role model of the family. So all the family, they are, they are watching and they are following the, the, the TV. But the godly family, is not being read by the TV. The Godly family, their Lord model is the word of God. Their Lord model is the Bible. Their Lord model, it is Christ. So the Godly family, they reflect themselves to the word of God. That they check themselves in the word of God. People are having facts how to keep a marriage. And those facts and those things they are all worldly. That if you want to keep your man, if you want to keep your husband, if you want to keep your, 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 your wife, they are teaching people in social media. But they are not using the Bible. But they are using uh, their own wisdom, the wisdom of Jezebel. That's where you will hear the saying that if you want to keep your man, so you need to dress immoral way. You need to do makeup. Eh? You need to dress sexy. So that you may reserve your husband. Those are the advice and the counsels of the world. The counsels of social media. The counsels of the Hollywood and the Bollywood. They are dirty counsels that comes to defy the godly family. But the godly family, they are being led by the word of God. They are being led by the Bible. Their examples are in the Bible. They look at people like Anna. They look at people like, uh, who are in the Bible. Women who, who walk in the godliness. Men who walk in the godliness. They, they, 
They examine themselves. They keep themselves in the word of God. But today, many families, they have been destroyed and been influenced by social media and by the TV. That there is no more holiness. There is no more righteousness. There is no more uh, uh, ways of God. How God ordains a man to look after he, uh, uh, he, uh, his wife. How God ordains a woman to look after, after her husband. There is no more those things. People are looking at the examples of the world. And when you go to the examples of the world, there is cheating, there is fornication, there is adultery. You find that they are copying the Alejandro and Alejandro had the, had, had the girlfriend. So Alejandro is dating two people. He have his husband, he have his, his wife, and he also have another girlfriend that, that they used to, to run with. In this, at, the, at the school, used to be a schoolmate. So they started dating, they started going together. So you find that the Christian, they are sitting down to be taught by Alejandro, by the adulterers, by fornicators, by the wicked people. Let us make the word of God the center of our marriage. Everything that we need to make the marriage or to make this godly fam family, it is in the word of God. We don't need to go there. To search there in the Google, to go in the social media, to, to watch those worldly music, uh, worldly movies. We don't need them. Anything that we need uh, to establish a godly family, a godly children, is in the Bible, the word of God. Let us go back to the word of God. Husband and wife, go back to the word of God. Reflect yourself in the word of God. Because those people that are counseling you, they are, they are bad people. The Bible says they are called a bad company. And we know the Bible says that a bad company ruins good morals. So when we, we engage ourselves to those people, we become like them. And we are losing our children and giving our children in the, in, in the, in the table of the devil. In the table of the devil. You see, that's why you see that not right now even men, they do not know their role. They do not know their role. The role that they were given by God. So we want to reflect the godly family according to the word of God. Let us read in the book of Ephesians 5.25. In the book of Ephesians 5.25, uh -huh, you will hear there is something that God gave here. And he gave, gave this word to us. That if you are a woman, there is a word for you. If you are a man... There's a word for you how we should we should handle this godly family because a godly family in this end time it is a godly family that is so blessed because many families many uh, families they are not families of God they have become families of the devil because they have entertained the devil. In, in, in them, hallelujah, yes, let us read here, the book of, in the book of Ephesians, you are reading in the book of Ephesians, in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians chapter 5, that's where you are reading, from in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians, Ephesians. Where is Ephesians? Ephesians. Yes, Ephesians. It is here. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, 25. 5.25, the Bible says this, Husband, love your wife even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water. Look at that. That husband, love your wife even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. That for a husband, for a husband, the Lord of a husband, it is to love, it is to love your wife. The love of the husband is to love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself. That is something that I have racked in the godly family. That the godly family 
a man should love uh, his his husband, he should uh, his wife. No, a, 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 a man should love his uh, his wife. Like Christ loved the church, also we, like men, we should love our wife. And if that thing would be exercised, there will be a godly family. Why did God command men to love their, hus uh, their wife? He commanded men to love their wife because when a man loves uh, uh, his, his wife, a wife will be we will we, 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 we'll be in a condition, we'll be in a condition of being uh, accepted. She will feel she is accepted. She will feel she is accepted. She will feel she is honored and she is welcomed. But if the husband do not love his wife, that means the wife will not feel accepted. What is bringing a uh, divorce? What is bringing this separation and killing the marriage it is wife people who are christians those who husband i'm speaking to a husband to somebody that even believe on god they have forsaken their marriage people have forsaken their marriage that they no longer have their wife uh, because jesus is coming doesn't mean you don't have to love your your wife you need to exercise your full authority to your wife to love and to care for the bible say that a husband should love his wife just like the, uh, the christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that as uh, uh, like the way jesus christ gave himself uh, to the church to be killed to be tortured also a husband should give himself to the family to the uh, to, to, to the wife that means give your time give your caring Give your interest. Give your time to speak to your family, to speak uh, to your to your children. But today's husband, they do not have the time to speak to their family, to speak to their wife, to speak to their children. They are so busy. After job, they come, they eat, and then they sleep, and then early in the morning. They go to job. So when will you have time with your family and discuss the matters of your family? When will you have time with your wife? When will you love her? When will you uh, speak to her? When will you show her how much you love, how much you care? Where is that love in the family? That when we bring back that kind of love, now the Bible says that the husband love your wife even as Christ love the church. We shall see a godly family form for me. But we cannot say that oh, some, there are even some who are even men of God, some are servants of God, but they do not exercise the love of God in their family. How can you claim to say that you love a sheep of God? You love God, you love the work of God, but you don't love your family, you don't love your wife. Some they do not care them. They do not even uh, care to call them. They do not care even to buy for them clothes. They do not care their interest. But they claim they, they care the interest of others. We are told before we go to exercise those love out there. Exercise that love in your family with your wife. Before you go to preach to others, you need to preach first to your family, to your wife. And that is the only way we can preach the gospel, by living what we preach, by exercising and practicing what we preach. So, love husband, love your wife, even as Christ loved the church and gave for it. Give yourself Give your time, give your resources, give your energy, give your everything to your wife, to your family. And that is the godly family, the godly family that is, will be built upon the rock. And when you build this godly family upon the rock, that marriage cannot be broken. That marriage cannot be, be shaken. And if it will be shaken, that marriage will stand. Praise Jesus Christ the Messiah. Hmm? 
That is the role of a man. It is to care. It is to love. God gave that role to of a man to care, to love, and to give himself uh, to, the, to the family. Hallelujah. To the family. Because some people, they give themselves, but they give themselves to others. But they don't give themselves all their time to the family. And that's where the, the, the destruction comes from in the marriage. That's where the devil brings uh, destruction. There is also uh, for, for women. For women, the role of a woman is also here in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5.22. The Bible says, Wife, submit yourself unto your own, unto your own husband as unto the Lord. For a husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Hallelujah. Therefore, as church is subject unto Christ, so let your wives be to their own hus husband in everything. That is a word for a godly family, that for you, the Lord of a woman, it is to submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord, that for you, you are called to submit yourself. And it says, for the husband is the head of the wife, and even as the Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. So even likewise, therefore, as even let your wives be therefore uh, uh, submissive, submissive to their own husband. When a woman is submissive to the husband, I tell you, that marriage will work. But there is nowhere or there is no how a woman uh, will be the head and the man will be the head. That marriage cannot succeed. It cannot go far. Because how can you cannot, you have never seen that, that, that two heads surviving, two heads surviving. It has not been seen like that. It cannot happen like that because two heads cannot survive, cannot stay in the same house. But a, a wife should humble herself, should be, uh, submit. Like the way you submit to the Lord, you are told to submit yourself to your husband. But the problem with the wife today, or with, the, with many women today, even the church, is that they are not submissive. They want to be them that are speaking. They want to be them that are leaders. They want to be them that are doing everything. They do not submit. They do not want to be led. They do not want to be under. They want to be on top. They want to be the leaders. They want to be the head. So when we bring that confusion, that one cannot work. Because... When God said that, um, uh, uh, that, 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 that a woman should, uh, should, uh, should humble herself or should submit and should become the, be, should be read, should not be the leader or should not be the head, God was not confused. But we see that today marriages, they are confused. They are confused that you find that a man do not have anything to say. That the woman is the one who does everything, everything. He, she does everything. She does everything. The husband cannot do anything. That is not the spirit of a woman. But that is the spirit of a Jezebel woman. Who want to take leadership. Who want to take authority from men. And to become the head. That is an antichrist spirit. You see. That women. They want to become leaders of them of them of themselves and they do not want to be to submit to any other man or to their husband. When they have their money, they say it is their own money. When they are they are doing their own job, they have that kind of pride that because I am working, I have my daughters, my money, I cannot hear what my husband is saying to me. You cannot cook for him. You cannot provide for him. That is not the spirit of a godly woman, of a vicious woman. That is a spirit of Jezebel, a wicked woman. Look at that. When we bring back this law of a man, that a man should love his, husband, his wife, and a woman should love her husband, when we bring that thing, like the way the word of God says, we shall, we shall begin to see the godly family. There will be no divorce. There will be no destruction. There will be no uh, violence in the family. 
but where you hear that are uh, that, uh, that that a man that a man is uh, that, uh, that, that, that 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 a certain man that a certain woman have been slapped by her husband why do women become slapped why are women slapped they are slapped when they, they do not submit you know you cannot slap somebody who do not submit i don't encourage women being slapped and that is not good it is even sin for you should not do those things those are the people of the world who who, who fight such like that, like that but why how why do they why do they become slapped they are slapped to try to be silent because a woman can speak a multitude of words when she is maybe angry when a man speak one word a woman will be speaking five words so you find that it is a, it becomes harder for them to submit and in that kind of of violence in that time of disagreement or argument a woman will be slapped because she do not submit but i tell you that when you are a woman when you submit that is a key that is a secret your husband cannot fight you because nobody who can fight somebody who is humble how will you fight him and he do not speak he do not fight back she or she su submit when you submit that is you will bring peace in your family you will bring peace you will bring love in your family but if you do not submit there will not be peace because you know that men are created to rule they are not created ah uh, to be ruled by women they are created to rule so when you try to raise yourself that you don't submit that man will also bring his he will try to compete with you and in the proper in the process they will be measuring they will be competing who is strong and that's where they end up destroying that marriage they end up destroying that marriage hmm? we are told that are uh, the law of a woman is this to submit this to submit not because not because you are submitting because of money not because you are submitting because your husband is good or is born again no submission it is a matter of submitting because you have the heart of submission you know you are all where you stand as a woman stand your position there are people who say no my husband whatever he she he no it doesn't matter who your husband is just be submissive woman and he shall win your husband there are places where you see that there is argument there is disagreement how can you win your husband as a woman you win your husband by only submit submission submit and humble yourself and you will win your husband you men of god you husband how can you win your wife by loving her and by caring and by as uh, 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 by, by, by giving yourself to, to 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 them give your time give your love give your caring that's how you will overcome uh, your has your your wife and you wife you will overcome your husband by submission those are two secrets that we need in the godly family to overcome it because today people they are submitting because of money you find that today there is no more even love that they submit because of money that if the husband has the money then you will submit to him who said even if your husband do not have money you still submit you will still obey you see love do not have condition love is unconditioned so submission does not come when your husband has the money or when your husband has anything no submission come in everything the bible says that in every matter let your wife be the uh, uh, submit uh, submit uh, uh, let your wives be the to 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 their own husband in everything let them submit to their own husband in everything in everything submit yourself submit your body to your husband submit your time submit eh, that you know that you have submit everything to him hallelujah yes and the marriage will work well and that will be a godly family that come from god 
You see, when you try to listen to the world, they will tell you, ah, you are a fool. How can you submit to your husband when he's doing all this to you? No. Let them speak that way. But let us hear from the word of God. The only way you can win your husband, it is not revenging. There are women who try to revenge to their husband. That one will never work. When you try to revenge to your husband, you want to show him how you are also tough. How you can also revenge, how you can also act. I tell you, you'll never win your husband. But when you submit yourself, and when you pay uh, 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 evil with good, you will win your husband, you will win your wife, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us stop revenging in the, in, in revenging in the marriage. Let us stop hurting each other, that you want to hurt him. You want to hurt her. So that she may he feel, or he may feel how you are feeling. No, that's not making family. That is breaking family. Praise Jesus. For the Bible says that you are one flesh. That when you are, you think you are hurting, you are hurting yourself. When you think that you are causing pain to him, you are causing pain to yourself because he be, he, the, he he is your bone. You are in one bone. You are one flesh. So whatever you think you are doing to him, you are doing to yourself. So the only thing you could do, it is to love yourself. And you'll be loved. You love him, you love yourself. You treat him well, you treat yourself. But when you treat him bad, you treat yourself. That's how family is. That's how God the family is. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Eh? It should be like that. Submissive. The Bible speaks about about uh, about about what we call about what we call uh, 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 we, those women who, who speak a lot. They are called noisy women. Noisy women. The word of God says that it is better that to, to stay uh, in a rooftop. It says in the book of Proverbs, we shall read there in a rooftop that to stay a man to to hide in the rooftop than to stay with a noisy woman. Huh? A noisy woman. A woman that speak too much. A woman that speak too much. So that is a character of, 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 of the wicked women, not a character of a godly woman. A godly woman, she knows when to speak and when to be shut up. That's how it is. And a godly husband knows when he should to speak and when to, uh, to be silenced. He knows to control himself. He knows the self-control. Hmm? Let us read in the book of Proverbs. In the book of Proverbs chapter Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21. 19. 21, 19. Uh-huh. The Bible says this. It is better to dwell in wilderness than with a contentious and an angry woman. Look at that. That it is better to dwell in wilderness than to dwell with a contentious and with an angry woman. Do you see that when you women, when you are angry, you become very bad. You, you become very bad. Eh? You act like a monster. You become like a creature. You see the Bible says that it is better. To dwell in wilderness, that a man you dwell in wilderness, you go free, you spend you there at the, in the wilderness, than to be with an angry woman and a contentious woman, a woman that speak too much. So those are the things that are destroying the family. Anger, anger, control yourself, women, control yourself. Anger, contentious, speaking a lot, submission. When you speak. When you speak, speak wisdom. When you speak, know when to speak. When you get angry, do not let the sun go down when you are still angry. The Bible says that it is better to, say, to, to, to go to, to dwell in the wilderness. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with the contentious and with the angry woman. How many men do you think they have run away from their family? They have run away from their from their marriage because of her of the of the anger of their wife, the contentious women. That men 
They need the peace. They need the peace. They seek for peace. They seek for peace. Many marriages, they are destroyed. Because a man was running away. He, 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 he preferred to go to wilderness than to dwell with an angry woman and a contentious woman. Hallelujah. So we need to have this wisdom in, in the Kodri family. The, those, those things they are eating up and destroying the family. It is anger. Anger. Anger is destroying the family. A man, you are being destroyed by anger. Bitterness. Those are the things that need to be dealt with, with a, in a family. So that we may, we may bring this family of godliness. We are told that when we are united, the devil cannot prevail. But when we are not united, the devil will prevail. That a kingdom divided cannot stand. That a man you are on your own, husband is on your own, that the kingdom cannot stand. It becomes destroyed. That's why we need to be one. Wife and, uh, and husband. They need to be one. One in the family. One in the prayer. One even in the belief. Yes. Because a kingdom divided, that kingdom cannot stand. We need to be solving the argument. We need to be solving the argument the disagreement so quickly, so quickly, without giving them time. Because when you give them time, they cause war. Bitterness after bitterness, there is revenge after the revenge. That's where you'd hear that they have decided to get apart, to part each other, to, dest uh, to, to separate each other uh, from each other. Why? Because they have not controlled themselves. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us read in the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 10. You will hear what God is telling. And this word is not just a word for the bread. It is a word for the marriage. It is the word also for the marriage. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 10. The Bible says this. Now, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. That when you are in the marriage, speak, speak the same thing. And that there be no division among you. But that you may be perfect joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. That you find that a man speak this way and a woman speak this way. You should come to a conclusion. You should not have different opinion. If you have different opinion, you should make them one opinion. That's where you find the people, they are, they are causing disagreement and argument. And therefore, you hear that there is violence. Why? Because you are not speaking the same thing. The Bible says, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. Speak the same thing. Agree in the same thing. If you are speaking on the issue of the house, if you are speaking on the issue of the children, you need to speak in, to conclusion in one thing. That you may not be divided. Because when you become divided in mind, you become divided also in where you sit. You become divided even in the bed. Because you have divided in opinion. Marriage is about oneness. Marriage is about oneness. Marriage is about unity. Marriage is about speaking the same mind, the same thing, the same language, singing the same song, praying the same prayer, believing the same belief. That's marriage. But when you are divided, they say, and that there be no division among you, but that you may be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. That's a godly family. Let us become one mind in family. Let us become one mind. Let us become one mind. Let there be no division. Speak the same thing. If you notice that your husband do not love that, therefore do not do that, that, that thing. You need to accept his opinion. Then you continue. But there are people who argue for nothing. Nonsense. Something that is very nonsense. And you keep on arguing, arguing, arguing. The whole of the night. Something that you would just keep the same, uh, uh, the, the same way, 
But now you are causing division. No, the Bible says speak the same thing. Yes. In the same mind. And the same judgment. So that you may, uh, uh, you may preserve the godly family. Because when you start dividing yourself. And those are the children. They are watching you. So that way you find that some children. They have divided themselves with their father. Others they have divided themselves with their mother. Because you are not perfectly one. The Bible says that you are one. You are not two. One opinion. One mind. One belief. One hope. One song. One speaking. But when you divide yourself. You cause the children to divide themselves. There are families that you find that. There is a lot of division. That those children they go with this. With their, their father. Another one they go with their, with their mother. They cause division. And that family. It is a, a kingdom divided. And it cannot stand. Because it has been destroyed. By all those divisions. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus Christ. So, be solving, be solving your thing. Be solving your thing very quickly. Let us read in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 3. 1 Peter. 1 Peter, chapter 3. That's where we are, we are reading. 1 Peter, chapter 3. 1 Peter, chapter 3. You will see why, why you, you need to solve uh, some of misunderstanding in the family. So that you may keep the godly family. And when you keep the godly family, you know that you are keeping the presence of God in the godly family. Because in the godly family, there is the presence of God. When Adam and Eve they were walking, they were having the fellowship with God. The presence of God was with them. But when they were destroyed and divided by the devil, that's where the presence of God left. So when you keep that, uh, that, that, uh, that um, unit and that love in the godly family, you will keep the presence of God. And this is why we should solve our, 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 our thing. We should solve our thing. If, some, if, you have been, if, if you have been offended or if you are, you are not, uh, you have been, uh, there is uh, something so, uh, you have been done by your wife or your husband, uh, that is you have been uh, offended. You should always go, uh, you should always make peace. Very quickly, because if you don't do this, then it will hinder you. In the book of First Peter chapter 3, 7, the Bible says, Likewise, you husband, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that you, your prayers may not be hindered. Look at that. That you wife, uh, you husband, dwell with them according to the knowledge, give, giving honor unto your wife. That you should dwell with your with your wife, according to their to, to according to your knowledge, knowing that they are weaker vessel, so they may tend to be weak. So do not become weaker in their weakness, but you need to become strong in their weakness, so that you may you may strengthen them. But if you become weaker and they are weaker, therefore all of you. You will, you will fade because a man is the leader. You see? So he said, likewise, you husband, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto your wife as unto the, as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that you oppressed may not be hindered. That when you, you, when you, when, when you are not do, uh, uh, considering their weakness, or when there is no peace, maybe you are not speaking with, with, uh, with, with your wife. Maybe you have, no, you have offended her. Maybe you have, uh, you, you have, uh, you have caused misunderstanding. There is a mis mis misunderstanding. There is a misunderstanding, misunderstanding between you and your wife, between you and your husband. The Bible says that your prayers may not be, be hindered. You should dwell with them. You should agree. You should solve that thing. Lest your prayer should not be hindered. Because you cannot be fighting and in those misunderstanding, then you go jump and you are going to pray. And you say that God will hear your prayer. God cannot hear those prayers because your prayer has been hindered. Marriage is very serious. Marriage is very serious. People who are single, they can pray and they can get the breakthrough because they are single. Yeah. But those that are in marriage, 
They are one. If anyone is offended or if anyone is hurt or if any among them is, is not well, is in bitterness or is in a, is in a, uh, uh, in, 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 is sad or is angry. That means that when you go to pray, you cannot pray because your prayers will be hindered. The angels won't receive your prayers. God won't receive your prayer until you go and you be reconciled with your husband, reconciled with your husband, you, with your wife. Go speak, forgive each other, and go speak and solve that thing quickly so that your prayers may not be hindered. And we are told, you husband, consider so much your wife as the weaker vessel that when there is those who misunderstanding, know that you are, the women, they are weaker vessel. So run to accept them and to receive the apology to receive them as the weaker vessel. And that means that you should not see their problem so much. But you should see your problem if you don't bear with them. Because they are weaker vessels. Praise Jesus Christ. So that's how we, 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 are, we are raising the godly family. A godly family, they, 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 they used to stay in peace, in unity. And if there would be misunderstanding, they could, be, they, they could go quickly and solve it. Lest their prayers would not be hindered. The fellowship that they had with God will not be hindered. Many families today, there is no fellowship. Prayers cannot be heard simply because wife and husband, they don't speak to each other. They have their own ways. Those are the things that are breaking the godly family. Lack of speaking, lack of communication in the marriage. Lack of reconciliation, reconciling each, to each other. That one is breaking the marriage and turning apart. Yes, the altar in the family. Another thing is about the children. We are told the godly family. Why is it this godly family? Why is it God, God the family? The God the family, the purpose of God giving to our, uh, the, why the purpose that God brought, uh, to, 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 uh, brought you together, the reason and the purpose, why God joined you together. The Bible says he joined you together to bring a God the family, to bring a God the offspring, a holy offspring, children of God. So your purpose in the marriage, it is not to educate children, with the, you to university and the degrees and whatever, those are least. Those are least. Those are least purpose for the godly family. But the most important purpose it is to raise children with the fear of God. It is to raise children who know to worship God and they have godliness. It is well. It is better. They used to go to university. But those people, they have the knowledge of God. They may not have the, the knowledge of this world, but let them have the knowledge of God. That's why children should be shown the ways of God. But today's marriages, uh, women, men, they see as if it is very something that is very odd to speak to their children about God, to speak to their daughter about God, about Jesus. They no longer speak to them about Jesus. They no longer speak about them, about God. Therefore, you, you are preparing, and some, they call themselves evangelists. Some, they call themselves preachers. But they have not preached to their children. They have not uh, uh, sat down with their, with their children, and they have taught them the word of God. We need to teach our children the ways of God. The Bible says here in the book of Proverbs, let us read it here, in the book of Proverbs 26, the book of Proverbs 26. Uh, no, no, Proverbs 20, 22. This 22, 6. Proverbs 22, 6. The Bible says this. Proverbs 22, 6. The Bible says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That is the purpose for the godly family, to train up the children in the way they should go. Which way? The way of God. And when they will be old, 
Those children will not go away. They will not depart from the ways of God. Why do we hear some children? They are going and they are joining themselves into the satanic kingdom. Why? Because they were not trained how to worship the real God. They were not shown how to worship God. How to how they were not trained the worship of holy God. You will be a failure. You will be a failure. When your child has completed university, but your child do you have not trained your child godliness. You will be a, a greatest failure, mother. You will be ashamed so much. Seeing your child, your child is killed. You have educated your children. You have invested all your money to your children to go to university to school. They have went the biggest school. But your children, they do not know God. You have not trained them righteousness. You have not trained them holiness. You have not trained them the way of God. You will become a failure in this world and a failure even in the kingdom of God. Because you have failed your purpose. For the purpose of a marriage, the purpose of the godly family, it is to raise a godly children. It is to train our children the fear of God, the, uh, the, the commandments of God. That was the purpose in our family. But today people, they don't care about God. Oh, all they care, it is about books. It's about books. That even your children, when they go to school, to Sunday school, the school of the Sunday school, when they go on Sunday to the house of God, when that child come, you don't care to ask your child, what did you run? What did you run today in the church? But you care so much to ask your children when she go to school. How did you run today in the school? Do you ask them that way because of the pain of how you are you are you are investing your money on the on the on their education? Why do you care so much the things of this world more than the things of the kingdom of God? That you don't care to lead the verse to your child. To lead the Bible to your child. But you care to lead, to show her, to show him the mathematics. To show him the vocabulary and the, and, and the homework of the teacher. Let us weight down the things of God and the things of men. The, 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 the knowledge of this world and the knowledge of God. The knowledge of the kingdom of God and the knowledge of this world. The knowledge of the kingdom of God is salvation. Is what will give us salvation and is what we can give to our children. I tell you, my devil and my sister, there is nothing that our children can inherit if not God who we are worshipping. If not, we train them how to worship God, how to fear God. The only inheritance that is ever everlasting inheritance, it is your children inheriting the worship of God, the righteousness, the holiness, the godliness that you have. Let your children inherit that. But they can inherit your car, your house, your money, but all that will be vanity. All that will be useless. But those children that we inherit, oh, the kingdom of God, they inherit the righteousness, they inherit the kingdom of God. So, that's how the godly family should be. Its center should be Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So, we, should show, we, 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 should, we should show our children and train them in the way of God. And they should be, be chastened. Today, even children, they are no longer being chastened. They are no longer punished. Huh? You have speared the whip to your child. That is ruining your child. That is destroying your children. Let us read what the word of God says. In the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 13.24 Proverbs 13.24 Proverbs 13, For those who spare, 13.24 say, He that spare his rod hates his son. But he that loved him, chased, chastened him, beat, uh, chastened him, beat times. Look at that. That he that spare the rod, if you spare the whip, you hate your son. But he that chastened his son, 
You see, but he that chastened his son, he loved him and chastened him bit, bit times. That means that when you, you, are, you are whipping, you are chastening, that is you are chastening your child with the whip. Hmm? That is love. You love that child and you love him that you don't want to, his life or his future to be destroyed. That's why you are, you are shaping, you are, you, are, you are whipping when you are shaping his tomorrow. But those who do not chasten their children, they are making their, their life to, be, to, to have dent, to have dent in their life. And they are damaging the life of their children. He that spare his rod hates his son. But he that loves him, he chasten him. Many times, that means you will chasten him. Many times you will chasten your child. That is the real godly family. But today's children, they are doing it, they are, they are sinning, but, but the father and the mother, they just look like them. They, they just watch them like that. They do not whip them. They do not chasten them. They do not sit down to cancel them. That is destroying your children. Let us, be, let us bring back the godly family. The godly family. The godly family that you cannot spare uh, 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 that you cannot spare your child from the whip. You don't spare the Lord, uh, the Lord to, to your to your son, to your daughter. Yes, because you wish them for good. You want to 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 sharpen their life. Hmm? You want to put their life in order with those rods. So we need to exercise that thing because today children they are not being chastened. That's why you see. That how people are do how children are doing, they are doing shameful thing because they are not chastened. It is a shame because they bring shame to you as a husband, as a as a wife, they bring shame to you as a woman, they bring shame to you as a parent. Seeing that your child is the one that doing that, you it is because you did not chasten. You are not there. We need to have time with our children and we need to watch them. That's why a pity those women who are single and those who are very far from their children that they do not speak to them when their children go astray they do not weep with them that is a disaster because there is something that your child is missing when your child has those horns when you whip you cut those horns but when you do not whip or chasten the child those horns keep on growing, 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 growing. And one day, they will strike you. They will strike you because you, you spared your children. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's what we need to do in Jesus' mighty name. Without favorism, you need to chasten your children and you need to show them the ways of God. Many people, they are the way they are because of their parent. The way you are. Maybe you are like that because your parents, they showed you the way and they were whipping you so you could not do anything evil. But for today's children, when, because we have spared the Lord, we have spared uh, the whipping and the cane, that's, where, that's why our generation is going mad. Mad each and every day because they are not corrected. They are not chastened. They are not sharpened. They are not pruned. Through the whipping. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus Christ. Yes. We need to show our children the way. Because that is the law of a godly family. Yes. The law of a godly family. Another thing that I want to, 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 to speak as I'm, I, am, I am going out to the, I'm going there to the conclusion. Is about something that is called the family altar. There is something that is called the family altar. What is the family altar? The family altar it is an altar that is being raised in the family. An altar of the family, it is an altar that has the fire. It keeps on burning. For you know that in the altar, there was the burning, the burning, uh, it was called the, like the, it was called the burning, the burning oil. It was called the burning lamp that kept on burning day and night in the altar. So in the altar, in the family, there is what we call the family altar. The, fa the family altar, it is an altar of prayer, prayer gathering, an altar of prayer, an altar of reading the word of God, an altar 
of, 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 of speaking with God as a family, that is an author. Many, 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 many families today, there is no family altar because there is no fire. In a godly family, there is that thing that we call the, the altar. And that's when Joshua said that me and my family, we shall serve the Lord. How? We shall raise a family altar. A family altar is whereby that you keep on coming together for prayers. That you, you do not stay apart. When you are sleeping, you come together and you pray. When you have your whole children there and you have your family, you as a man, you take the responsible of the family altar. You take the Bible, you read the scripture, you discuss the word of God with your family and then you pray. You engage that family altar. You engage the family in the prayer. And that's how you raise the family altar. And in the family altar, there is the fire that keeps on burning there. When you unite together to read, to pray together. When you hold your hand with your children, with your husband, with your wife, there is power. That is what we call the family altar. And when the devil wants to destroy the family, he destroys first the family altar. He destroys that relationship, that fellowship that you used to have. And then he destroys the family. But when we raise back the family altar, that is, you raise back the prayers as a family. You raise back the prayers as with, with the children. You believe the same God. When you call God as a family, the presence of God will be welcome in that family. Praise Jesus Christ. But today, the family author is exchanged with Hollywood, with Bollywood, with the movies, and with the games and social media. That there is no more prayers as a family. Because when they go there, they are all busy with the social media chatting. They are all busy with the games, huh? with the movies and with the TV. They do not have time to gather and to raise this family altar. And that's where the devil slips in and he brings destruction and a falling in the godly family. You see? Many children, many, many, many people, many husbands and many wives, they are destroyed. Because there is no family altar. When the, a family comes together, they win the devil. For Joshua said, me and my family, we shall serve the Lord. Me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And when you look at the family today, are they doing so? They are not doing so. They are serving the gods of this world. They are serving the idol TV. They are serving the games. They are serving the social media. They are serving and being served from the table of the devil. But they are not served in the table of the Lord. Praise Jesus Christ. My dear brother, my sister, we need to bring back the family altar of the godly family. And when we raise that thing and protect it by, by prayer, I tell you that the presence of God will never leave that family. And the devil will be defeated in the mighty name of Jesus. There is power when you open the scripture in the family altar. There is power when you hold your children and you pray for them. You need to pray for your children. You need to take the water or to take the oil and pray for it. And then you bless your children. You pray for your children. That is the power of the family altar. Blessing your children, raising a standard for your children, for the generation, and also bringing the presence of God in your family. Hmm? Let us strengthen the family altar, not destroying it. There is power. When we read in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, 
When we read in the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 6, you will hear there is something that God said. And this he gave to the children of God, the family of God, the family of the Israelites. They were family of God. And God knew. He knew that if we shall exercise, exercise this, therefore I tell you, that God, will, uh, God, uh, uh, the worship of God will never be, will never depart in our family forever. Hmm? God will never depart. It is in the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter six. That one is verses uh, six. The Bible says this. He said, "And those words which I command thee this day shall be in your heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto your children." Yes, that is Deuteronomy six seven. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto your children, and shalt talk of them when you sit in your house. You see, you shall talk of those things when you sit in your house. Which things do you speak with your children when you sit down? You speak about Hollywood. You speak about movies. You speak about celebrity. Some speak about football. Some speak about studies. Some speak about scientific. But the Bible says, that answer and when you sit down, when you sit in your house, when you walk, when you sit in your house, you shall teach them, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto your children, and the, and shall talk to them when you shall sit in your house. So, what is this thing that repressed? Rep rep what is this thing that repressed God in the family? What is this thing that repressed God? It replaced God in our family. That instead of speaking the things of God, we speak the things of the world. Instead of discussing the matters of the uh, eternity, the matters of the kingdom of God or the word of God, the laws of God, the teachings of God, we sit down to discuss the political, to discuss the news. You see? Let us be watchful. For those are the things that are killing the godly family. They are killing this family altar. For there is no prayers. There is no discussion of the word of God. There is no teaching. There is no reading of the word of God. When we sit down, he said that we should talk those things to our children. But today they no more speak those things. They no more speak about godliness. They no more speak about righteousness. They no more speak about holiness, about God. About his commandment, about the fear of God, they speak about the world, about education. Huh? Those are things that are killing the family, the godly family, and destroying this family altar. We, instead of planting God in the family, we are not. We are uprooting God in the family. There are things that have come to separate us from the presence of God. Those things, they have come to separate us from the presence of God. They have come to, 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 squeeze, eh? to squeeze the power of the Holy Spirit. That he, he cannot be comfortable. He, he, he will leave us. He will leave us. When we start speaking and discussing such a thing. For there are things that do not give value to him. Hmm? God say, and thou shalt teach them children to their children. And thou shalt talk to them when thou sit in the, in the house. And when thou walks, walks by the way, and when thou lies down, and when you rise up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as a full frontlet between your eyes, and thou shalt light them upon the post of your house and on your gates. Hallelujah. And it shall be when the Lord your God have brought thee. You see, that all those things, the word of God, that's the purpose of the godly family. There is nothing else. There is nothing else. I used to read the, those books in the, in the Rost book. And I would hear that, that Noah, I don't know if it's Noah or Enoch, that Noah or Enoch, it is Enoch, sorry, it's Enoch, that that man was a, a, a righteous man, that he would teach his family. They would teach, his, they would even fast in their family. That today we are fasting even our children. They were living in a godly life and they were teaching and sitting down discussing the word of God with their children, with their wife, and what they were planting, they were raising a godly family that was so strong, and nothing would break that family anymore. And those children, they were very, 
very, very, very righteous. They walked in righteousness. But today, we do not have time for God. Some, they even look as if, uh, as if speaking the matters of God, it is old. Those things are old. It, it is not a good thing. Uh, we need God. We need to bring back God. To bring back uh, the revival in the family. Yes, so that we may restore the godly family of God. Praise Jesus Christ. We should do that thing. Because the enemy have replaced the, the prayers with the TV. He have replaced the discussion and the reading of the word of God with the news. Mm. And with the worldly things. And worldly discussion. And worldly talks. Those things, they have replaced the presence of God. And the presence of God we have no any we have no effect. Because instead of the presence of God, it is the entertainment in the family. Entertainment and dramas and comedies. My dear brother and my sister, we need to bring back God in this end time. Because that was the purpose. That was the purpose why God united you and that man. Why God brought you together. Why God gave you those children that you have? You may have those children. You don't have a husband. But why did God give you those children? He gave you those children to bring them in the fear of God. Even if you are a single mother or a single father. Bring your children in the fear of God. Your children we have nobody to complain to. When they get lost, they have nobody to complain to. But if they get lost, they will complain to you. My dad, my father, they never shown me. They never taught me. They never warned me. They never taught me. Because you did not have that family altar. Praise Jesus Christ. Those are things that, that, that even the pagans are doing. Sometimes we see that the pagan, they know how to do them. That when you go to a, a house of Islam, Islam hmm? those uh, people of Muhammad, when you go to those people, you find that they have a family altar. They and their children, they pray together. They read the, 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 uh, the Quran. They recite and they, they meditate. They discuss. But when you come to the Christians, there is no family altar. There is no more of exercising your faith publicly. Even when the, there, is a, there is a visitor, exercising what you do, praying together, reading the word of God together. You see? But there... In Islam, even in, with the Indians and those who worship Buddha, you find that they are so much, uh, they are so much devoted to their gods. Even their family, they have their idol there, uh, where the family worship. It is a family altar where they worship the Buddha. Uh, what about us? We worship a true God. Where? Why can't we worship God? Uh, in that manner, how, how, why can't we? Can't we be devoted to a living God? Hmm. Let us read in the book of in the book of, of Maraki. The book of Maraki, we are reading the book of Maraki chapter 214. Maraki chapter 214. You will hear why why the purpose, the big purpose why God uh brought uh this marriage. Hmm. Why are you in marriage? Why are you in marriage? You are not in marriage to educate your children. So that they may go to university. That was not the purpose. That is the least purpose. It is good. But it is the least. That is not the purpose. In the book of Maraki, chapter 2, verses 14. This is what you will be asked. Because those are the things that we also uh, make uh, even other people not to see the kingdom of God. Yeah. Because if you are responsible to your, to your children... You will be responsible to their soul. If they go to hell, you will be responsible to them. If you don't show them the way. We are reading in the, in the book of Maraki, chapter 2, verses 14, the Bible says, Yea, wherefore, because the Lord has been witness between thee and the wife of your youth, against whom has, has dealt treacheries, yet is their companion and the wife of your covenant. 20, 15 says now here and did not he make one yet 
yet had he the residue of the spirit and why one that he might seek a godly sin seed you see that he might seek a godly seed therefore take it to your spirit and let none dare treasure against the wife of his youth hear that that the purpose why you are brought together that he might he might seek a godly seed so god is seeking a godly seed that is the same god is seeking a godly seed not a, a an green seed a godly seed a godly children a godly son a godly daughter that is what god is seeking in your marriage so those who join a marriage it is a test it is like you are asking God to give you a work to do. Your work it is to bring. For God is seeking a godly seed. So God is calling you to bring out your children to become a godly seed. Holy people of God. Praise Jesus. To raise a godly offspring. Children who fear God. Children who know how to worship God. Children who have the fear of God in their heart. That is the purpose. But most marriages, most marriages, they have failed that purpose. All they care it is about the school, the school, the education, the education, the university, the university. That those are the things that they care. But they don't care about the godliness of that child. The godliness of that daughter. And that's what you'll be asked in the day of judgment. You'll not be asked. How many schools have you taken your child? How many degree did your child acquire? You will not ask all those questions of educations and the books of this world. You will be asked, did you bring out your children in the fear of God? Did you show them? Did you train them in the way of the Lord? Did you show them how to worship God? Did you bring out that God received? Or you forgot? Those are the things that will be asked in the kingdom of God. So that's how God is saying about the Godly family. Let us exercise all full authority and laws of the Godly uh, of the Godly family. And another thing. Let us be let there, let there be prayers. Let there be love. Let there be respect to each other. To each other. A husband love. A, a, a woman respect. Children's care. Care your children without, without favoring them, without uh, scattering them. Yeah? Because your child is named after your father, another child is named after after your father in law, and so you do not uh, love. So you find that you are dividing your children because of your name. Love all your children, care them all. Do not show that there is a child that you love most and there is a child that you do not love most. Because that is the problem that was brought up. That was the problem that was brought up when Jacob did not show up the love, the same love toward his 12th son. There are those children that were most loved, like Joseph was most loved. And when he was most loved, those other children like Benjamin, uh, they, they plan how they could kill Joseph because they, see, they saw that uh, uh, their father loved Joseph more than them. So sometimes we bring this division in our children. Our children fighting themselves because we parent, we are loving these children and we are like hating other children. We are not exercising the same love the same care to all of them. So when you bring that thing that a father, that my father loves, loves certain, the certain, and she, he don't love us. He loves those people. He loves those children that are named after his, his family or after his relatives, but not after, uh, after the relatives of the mother. That thing bring division. And that, that thing plants a seed of discord. The same seed that was planted in the house of Jacob. And they started fighting against Joseph. So as parents, let us exercise love without partiality. Partiality of name, partiality 
of the tie of the name of the child or partiality of the child. No, no. Let us all put our children the same. Exercise the same love to the children. Yes, so that you may not destroy that family. Praise Jesus Christ. Bible says that when when we when, when we are staying in this in this kind of uh, of love, huh? Uh, we are blessed. We are blessed. Let us finish I, I, with the book of First One, the uh, uh, Psalms, Psalms, Psalms One, that three, Psalms One, that three, and you hear the power, the power of unity, the power of unity in the family, the power of unity in the family. That is Psalms One, that three, one, Psalms One, that one, that three, one, that three, one. The Bible says this. They say this. Beyond how good and how pleasant is it for our brethren to dwell together in unity. Praise Jesus. You see, the Bible says, Beyond how good and how pleasant is it for our brethren to dwell together in unity. Is, like, is, is, it, is it like the precious ointment upon the head that land down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts on his garments. You see, that beyond how good and how pleasant is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like a precious ointment upon the hand that land down upon the beads. So behold how good and prison. It is good and prison. How blessed are they? They that live in unity. They, they that live in peace. So as a wife and a husband, as a wife and a husband and the children, let us live in unity. Let there be love. Let there be respect. Let there be caring. And surely you shall see the power of God over your family. For the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verses 9, that two are better than, uh, than one, for they have a good reward. That when you are two, when you are two, when you unite yourself, you have a better reward. When you come together to pray, you have a better reward. And God hears your prayer. But when you are scattered, when you are divided, when you don't show God, when you don't put God at the center, the devil takes over the marriage. And that's where from godly family to ungodly family. God is calling for godly family to raise a godly family in this end time. I want to pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray in Jesus' mighty name. And that is the family, that is the godly family that God is looking for. A godly family is the godly family that is representing the kingdom of God is a family of God that is represented, is being represented here, raising ambassadors of God. That though we are in this world, but we are not of this world, because we have been raised and planted in the godliness and in the root of the word of God. And when the shaking will be coming, that the family will be shaken, but the family will remain standing because they have been trained. To worship God. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Mighty Father, our God and our Savior, we come before you. We glorify your name and we praise you so much. For there is none like you, God, in heaven and earth. Thank you, Jesus, because you have spoken to us. You have spoken to the marriage. That, Father, there is a need to bring back the godly family. Because you are looking for the godly family. That's where you are choosing from the godly family. That's where you are waiting, Father, that you may choose your people, your children, those that will worship you in the spirit, in the godly family. Oh Lord Jesus, I pray for the marriages today, that the spirit of divorces, the spirit of destruction, the spirit of scattering the marriage, the children, that spirit I rebuke, I disconnect in Jesus' name. I pray, Father, that you may bless your children in Jesus' name. Cover the marriages by the blood of Jesus. Cover the children by the blood of Jesus. Lord, and give them the wisdom how to handle the marriages in Jesus' name. Many are the women who do not have wisdom. Give them wisdom. Many are the men who do not have wisdom. Give those husbands wisdom in Jesus' name. How to live, how to rule, how to become the head in the family in Jesus' name. And I pray that Jehovah 
that where there was no communication in the family, let there be communication in this family that is listening and watching in Jesus' name. Where there, is, there was no unity, I declare unity in Jesus' name. Where there was no love, I declare love in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you may take over the children, train them, Father, in the way that they should go, and impart the fear of God in them in Jesus' name. O oh God, our Savior, we surrender to you that your will be done upon our children and upon our marriages in Jesus' name. Father, I surrender your people before you, and I declare the blessings upon their children, the blessings upon their marriage. Even they that are not married, I declare blessings of marriage in Jesus' name. And I pray, Father, that your will be done. In the name of Jesus, we do pray and believe. Amen, amen, amen. The Lord bless you. May the Lord favor you. May the grace of God be with you. The love of God be with you. In Jesus' mighty name. Install the Apostle Simon Geshinga application on Play Store for the end time epistles. Writings of the last days with apostolic wisdom and revelation of the word of God that prepares the bride of Christ for the marriage feast of the Lamb of God. Beyond, the kingdom of God is near and Jesus Christ is coming soon. Install from Play Store and read the epistles. It's offline once you download.